Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and in today's video, I've got 15 tips that are going to help you master your macro photography. I'm going to jump straight in with tip number one. So I've got today's tips split into four sections. Uh, you can see the sections along the timeline at the bottom and skip ahead if you want. But this first section is going to be all about focus and depth of field, both huge factors in macro photography because the closer you get, the more magnification you have, the shallower your depth of field is going to be, which makes it really tricky to choose where to focus and to focus properly in macro. So my first tip is going to be to use a narrow aperture. Aperture is the main way that we can affect our depth of field in photography and uh, particularly in macro photography choosing a really high f number or a really small aperture is going to give you just a little bit more working space, a little bit more of your image in focus. Uh, doing this, choosing a small aperture is obviously going to let in less light, so you might need to compensate with some extra light or a higher ISO, but that is the balance of our settings. For tip number two, I'm going to recommend that you learn how to focus stack. Even if you don't end up using it regularly, it's certainly a fun technique to know how to do. And if you do want a perfectly sharp image, it completely sidesteps that issue of your narrow depth of field. Uh, focus stacking is not as daunting or challenging as it sounds. It's a little bit more time consuming, but all it is is taking uh, a sequence of images uh, while moving your camera through the shot. So you can either change the focus of your lens or you can use a focus stacking rail like this one to, uh, to move your camera forward and back, taking images as you go. This will give you uh, multiple slices of your image uh, in focus, and then we can use a program to blend them all together and get a perfectly sharp image. We have a full tutorial on how to focus stack. I'll link it up in the top right hand corner if you wanna go and check that out. Tip number three is to focus manually. Most macro photographers are using manual focus uh, because autofocus takes too much of that control away from you. It's easy to uh, use it for larger subjects where you obviously want somebody's face or you have a main subject in the middle of your frame. Um, but for macro photography, things are often a little bit more muddy in the frame. You've got things much closer to the camera. You've got a lot more depth uh, and your, your camera is not necessarily going to know which part of your image you want your focus to be. So choose your focus manually and you'll have ultimate control over exactly where your focus sits in your image. It also allows you to do focus stacking. You can't use autofocus uh, while focus stacking because your focus will change as you move your camera forward and back. So manual focus is the macro photographer's friend. Tip number four is to check and triple check your focus. It's really easy to just uh, knock your focusing ring a little bit or a uh, slight movement of the camera or the subject, even just by a millimeter or so, can take your focus away from where you wanted it to be and potentially ruin your image. There's a lot of good ways to uh, check your focus. You can zoom in on uh, your live view on the back of the camera. And a lot of cameras these days also have a setting called focus peaking, which will show you outlines of whereabouts in your image is the most in focus. Our first four tips have been how important focus is, but uh, tip number five is that focus isn't important at all. And maybe you should just ignore it. Uh, well, not ignore it entirely, but uh, don't um, stress so much about exactly how sharp your images are. There's a lot of fun to be had uh, by exploring uh, interesting angles with a shallow depth of field and embracing that depth of field to get bocker in the back of your images. You can get some really abstract shots by simply um, not going for that perfect, sharp, in-focus image, but maybe just embracing a little bit of soft focus in your shots. Our next section is all about composition and tip number six is going to be to use a tripod. Now, not everybody likes shooting on a tripod, uh, but it's hard to deny the stability advantages that come from setting up on something like this. Um, you get a lot more movement in macro photography. Every little movement is magnified, so it's particularly hard to keep the camera steady. Uh, shooting on a tripod will allow you to use a slightly slower shutter speeds and get brighter images, um, but also it'll afford you a lot more time to check your focus and uh, adjust your subject and settings. Tip number seven is to take your time. A lot of photography is done on a whim and uh, you shoot first and ask questions later, but 
macro photography is one of those genres that uh, really rewards sitting back and thinking about your shots before you take them. Uh, setting up very carefully, checking and triple checking every little uh, aspect of your image will pay dividends when you come back at the end and everything is perfect. Uh, so taking your time to check all of the other tips from today, uh, like your focus, your lighting, uh, your composition, um, it will all help in the long run. Tip number eight is to move the subject, not the camera. Obviously, if you're shooting a landscape, you have to move the camera to change the shot. But when you're shooting macro, and especially if you're shooting on a tripod, it's often easier to set up your camera and then position and move your subject in front of the lens uh, so that you don't have to reset up your, your camera and your composition. Um, this is simply down to the fact that macro photography is usually small subjects, which are much easier to manipulate than changing a full camera and tripod setup. The last tip for our composition, tip number nine, is going to be to not forget your backdrop. It's really easy to get caught up in the detail of your subject, especially if it's something particularly interesting. However, uh, ignoring your backdrop um, can leave your image looking a little bit off and you might not be able to figure out why. Um, using something like uh, background cards, these little um, gradients that add some colour into the background of your images, or even just shooting on a plain, pure black background can make all the difference for your macro photos. I've got a tutorial for that black background technique, uh, I'll link it up in the top right hand corner. Moving swiftly on to our next section, which is all about lighting. Uh, tip number 10 is to get a dedicated light source. This is a little bit obvious uh, considering we invented the Adapt Lux Studio for this exact purpose, uh, but when you're shooting macro, it's often very difficult to get light uh, to behave the way that you want it to, even just to hit your subject when you're that close, and using those small apertures as well uh, really limits the amount of choices that you have. Having some extra lighting around to be able to uh, direct exactly where you want it to be uh, is a very powerful tool for macro photographers to have. Tip number 11 is to go continuous. If artificial light and adding and changing your light seems a little bit daunting and you're not really sure uh, where to place it or what it's going to look like or uh, what are the proper ways to do things, uh, continuous light is a great tool for learning exactly how light works. Uh, because continuous lights are on all of the time and you can see uh, the difference that all of these changes are making in your images as you change them, um, it means that you can uh, very quickly see what is going to happen to your image if you move your light, if you change the intensity, or if you add some diffusion or some colour. Speaking of colour, tip number 12 is to use some colour. Uh, this is a little bit counterintuitive for a lot of photographers who are uh, born and bred to work with white light and get natural representative images. But even if you're used to that type of uh, work, uh, don't neglect the use of colour in your images. Even a very subtle hint of coloured light can uh, add highlights and add visual interest to your images without being overpowering. You don't have to go over the top but it's certainly worth a try. Now onto our final section, which is all about techniques and approach. We have tip number 13, which is to go experimental. Um, experimentation in macro photography is hugely important for learning and also for finding uh, the, the genres and the types of photography that you really enjoy. It's easy to pick up a camera and take a picture of a flower and say, yeah, I like taking pictures of flowers, but what about everything else? You could try different subjects like uh, uh, we shot ferrofluid, which was a very interesting and weird subject and resulted in some very abstract shots. You could also try shooting your subjects that you really like, but using different techniques. We tried shooting without a lens which was really interesting, although technically not macro photography. Um, but for instance, you could try shooting your flowers under UV. UV photography has a very shallow learning curve. It doesn't need any uh, modifications to your camera, but can result in an entirely different image uh, of the same subject. So I do recommend going out and experimenting with different subjects and techniques. Tip number 14 is to go elaborate. Unfortunately, not everything can be uh, achieved with some dedication and uh, a lot of creativity. Sometimes we do need um, some research, some more elaborate uh, equipment and setups. 
Uh, for instance, water drop photography requires a flash, it requires a, a water drop kit, tripods, wires, all sorts of things, and it has a very steep learning curve. However, the payoff for that type of photography is massive, and it might just be the thing that captures your imagination. I recommend at least once trying one of these uh, sort of elaborate, more um, time-consuming types of photography just to see whether it's your type of thing. A link to our water drop photography tutorial up in the top right hand corner if you want to go and check that out. Finally, tip number 15 is not so much a, uh, a tip for macro photography as it is for life in general, but it is simply to have fun. Now that does sound simple, but it's not always that straightforward. Everybody at some point in their uh, photography career um, will get disheartened. Maybe you've uh, lost inspiration or you've been looking at Instagram and seeing all of these amazing pictures that other people are coming out with and thinking that yours aren't that good. Um, but there is a reason for this. It's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. It states that the more uh, competent you become with something, the lower you rate your actual abilities right up until you become an expert. So uh, that means that uh, true beginners will be overestimating their abilities, thinking their pictures are amazing when in fact there's probably some room for improvement. But the vast majority of us are sat down at the bottom of this curve, um, potentially thinking that our images are not quite as good as they actually are. So that in itself is a reason to press on and to photograph for yourself and not try to keep up with other people. Uh, do what you enjoy and photograph what you want to photograph uh, because you enjoy it, not because you're trying to keep up with all of those amazing photographers on Instagram. And of course, there's always a lot of inspiration out there in case you get stuck. Uh, make sure to subscribe to our channel because we run uh, macro tutorials every two weeks. Uh, so hit that subscribe button uh, for uh, lots more uh, ideas and inspiration in the future. If you found any of these tips helpful, make sure to hit the like button and let me know down in the comments if you have any tips of your own. I'm sure everybody will be really grateful for any um, advice that you can give uh, to the community. For now, that is all that I've got time for though, guys. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.